Thanks for watching my video, everybody, and see ya in my next. What has my life become? But next week, I will make my Among video a game about the biggest game in the world. And my life will finally have purpose again. I survived right on time, baby. If my calculations are correct, Among Us will be dead within 24 hours. I have to try. Stephen forever. See, it wasn't laziness. This actually happened. Let's get into Fusion 360. I wanted my proportions to be as accurate as possible, so I drew up this cheat sheet. I also designed this blueprint, but I opted out of it at the last second. I just figured the threading would look better. You're more than free to use that design, though. I couldn't have asked for a simpler character design to work on, which actually saved me so much trouble, especially given how precise threading is. Like my original blueprint, this Among Us guy is going to be composed of two different bodies, which are going to screw right into each other perfectly. Measurements are absolutely crucial here. Of course, I'm going to have to sand them down a little bit because 3D printers aren't perfect, but we still want to get this as precise as humanly possible to make sure the threads actually screw into each other. For anybody scratching their heads wondering what is threading, to put it simply, it's making screws. And for my science fanboys watching, it's a continuous helical ridge formed on the inside or outside of a cylinder. You could do it in Fusion 360 with the push of a button, or you could do it on a lathe in real life with the pull of a lever. To apply threading in Fusion 360, you just click on a face, hit create, threading, and then it'll automatically pick the right size for you. You can always change it, but the automatic one is usually best. As long as the diameter of the screw and the nut are compatible, it should screw together just fine. We're 3D printing though, so I would recommend printing your nut to be just a little bit bigger than the screw. The only other important definition for today's video is fillet. So to fillet something means to add a rounded edge to a corner. Among Us crewmates are actually kind of square, except they have rounded corners, so filleting is going to be perfect for this design. One of the real reasons for this video's delay actually happened right here. The model itself looks fine, but my 3D slicing software saw this collision as a void of some sort, so it decided to fill it itself. The solution is simple. When you're finished modeling, join all of your bodies together to make one object. The fillet tool is almost entirely cosmetic, so you don't really need to worry about being precise or anything like that. You can just eyeball it, play with the measurements, and really just adjust it until you get the exact look you're looking for. The backpack is super simple, it's just a box, and then we're just gonna fillet all the corners and it'll round it off and boom, backpack, easy as that. Just like the feet, I'm gonna have the backpack intersect with the body here, but you have to be very careful. As I said earlier, you need to combine all of your bodies into one object when you're done so that it'll print just fine. Don't freak out about the sudden change in appearance, all I did was go into render view and change the material to anodized metal. 
The only difference between the backpack and the visor is that the visor is going to be hollow. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can extrude the inside and then round it differently from the rim here. So you can see right here, we can actually just grab the infill from the rectangle we extruded and we can just take that out and then fillet this and it's going to look like a visor coming out. I think we've got a really good looking crewmate right here, but we still need to add the bone. I'm not about to try to make a bone in Fusion 360, so let's head on over to Blender real fast. You can find a bone model just like this on Thingiverse in two seconds. And all I'm going to do is cut the bone in half, throw it down the middle, and we'll be good to go. Now, if you plan on printing the bone separately, you're going to need to fill that bone back up, because right now that empty space is just a void. But with a simple shape like this, the easiest thing you can do is create a cylinder and then just fit it inside of the bone. If you're printing it separately so that you can assemble it by hand, I would actually recommend the cylinder trick. It'll make it a much more secure fit. At this point, all that's left is to generate the supports, which Chi2Box does automatically, but we need to apply a couple of extras just in case. There's a lot of solid resin in this design, so I would definitely recommend going into your settings and applying a light infill to cut the cost in half. Yikes. Without the infill, it cost $1.36. I miss gloves not costing $35 a box. I found that gray resin is the most reliable type to use. I don't know if that's just me, but that's just what works. You're lucky you don't have to wait four hours like I do for this. The resin's still uncured, so a little bit of acetone will make it come right off the printing plate. Most people say you should use flush cutters to remove supports to avoid damage, but we've got a lathe at our disposal, so I'm not really worried about surface damage. Just like my rings, I can really easily sand a curve on this thing. We took this thing out of a vat of uncared resin, so we have to give it a quick acetone bath to make sure there's nothing left on the outside of it. When a print comes out of a printer, it's about 99% cured, but there's still definitely some softness there. By using a UV light, we can finish hardening up this thing, and I usually like to do around one minute per side. Like any material, different resins have different properties, so this is definitely something you should look up to make sure that you're doing it right. Then this happened. The bone snapped like a twig, so I had to go back to my 3D model, separate the bone, and then put a hole in the body so I could just screw the bone right in myself. It took a couple of tries. But hey, that just made the successful print feel that much better. It wasn't perfect though, I still needed to expand the hole just a little bit more with my Dremel here. I'm definitely going to adjust the model so that the hole is bigger for future prints, but there were so many failed prints at this point that I just wanted to use my Dremel to solve it.
As I warned before, 3D printers aren't perfect, so we're going to need to use our sanding drum to make sure that the threading fits together. I definitely recommend sanding the inside rather than the outside. Not only is it concealed, but also the shape is going to help lead the Dremel around more evenly. If you sand your interior as much as I did, eventually you're going to have to get that exterior as well to prevent wobbling. As I said in the beginning of the video, the easiest solution is to simply scale up your bottom model a little bit more than the top. Finally. I was a little too aggressive when I was pulling the supports off his head, so we're going to put him in the lathe and round off his head just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Resin dust is pretty toxic, so I'm wearing a mask and I'm also using water to make sure as the little dust gets around as possible. This is actually way easier than sanding rings. The only thing I'm worried about is the pressure from the jaws breaking the resin. At this point, that's kind of what I was expecting. That's a million times better and way less lumpy. I love adding a cursed twist to things, so I'm going to apply a couple of base coats of black to my figure here. One, so that the paint has something to stick to, and two, later on we can scuff the surface and it's going to reveal black underneath. I got really worried at the idea of spray paint interfering with the threading, so I applied painter's tape to the inside of the nut and the outside of the screw so that no paint would get on them. Even if we did paint this thing, the act of screwing and unscrewing it is eventually going to wear and tear the paint down anyway. If you want your crewmate to look as clean as possible, I would definitely recommend printing in the color that you're going for. Not too long after I made him the Pepto-Bismol ring, my friend Baja sent me this airbrush and I've been looking for an excuse to use it ever since. This is actually my first time ever using an airbrush in general, so go easy on me. I definitely know a lot more about airbrushes now as I narrate this video, but using an airbrush for all the painting for this was a terrible idea. Rather than watching me fail in silence, let's use this as a learning opportunity real fast. Mistake number one, the paint should not be that wet. I went way too hard on these layers. Mistake number two, I'm holding the airbrush way too close to what I'm painting, especially for the amount of paint that I'm letting out of the nozzle. Before you say mistake number three, I didn't dilute my paints, I was afraid of not knowing how to do that as well, so I just bought an airbrush paint set. This does not need any dilution whatsoever. I'm going to say mistake four is actually more mistake 3.5, which is me using the airbrush to paint the entire thing the color I wanted. I say mistake 3.5 because it really helped sell that dingy look I was going for, so we'll say task failed successfully. The paint is extremely thin, so all it takes is a light brush from our finger in order to make that paint come right off. Every time we paint over a spot that we brushed off, it's going to leave a little outline behind that'll really help make a more natural looking dingy look. Going forward, I definitely recommend leaving the painter's tape in the prints and using a paintbrush for the outside, but it's all a matter of preference. It's probably going to be a hot second before I use the airbrush in a video again, but I'll definitely be using it on my prints as I learn more about it in the meantime. If you're an airbrush pro or you simply know a lot about them, be sure to leave a comment below to give me some tips and tricks on how to improve. As I mentioned before, airbrush paint is extremely thin, so when I say hit it with the sandpaper, I mean literally hit it with the sandpaper, because if you sand it, it'll just take all the paint off. With the damage out of the way, all that was left was to paint the visor and then seal it all up. Painting the body with the airbrush made painting the visor with acrylic paint pretty stressful because I knew that if I messed up anywhere, I wouldn't be able to go over it with regular paint without it sticking out like a sore thumb. This paint is way more opaque, so it's really going to leave some bad spots behind if I try to cover it up with regular red.
I realized there was one place I knew the airbrush would work 100%, the shine in the visor. A really quick pass of directed white is all it took to add a nice little flourish to this thing. The last and most straightforward thing to paint was the bone. The suit seemed pretty shiny in the game, so I decided to use Krylon Clear Gloss Spray as my sealant. Even with thin coats, this stuff tends to be kind of heavy, so I decided to cover up the threads once again with painter's tape so that they won't get ruined. Until I can guarantee the threads won't be destroyed with the sealant, I'd rather have the paint wear off faster on the threads than them not work at all. After a million failed attempts, it was finally done and ready to be assembled. This is only my second custom print ever. I would say the 3D printing is one of the coolest and most gratifying experiences that you can get. Thanks to 3D printers, you can conceptualize, design, print, and have a functional thing in front of you in a couple of hours. The craziest part of all is that a starter printer with resin is only going to run you around $200. If you like things, let alone making things, there's pretty much no reason to not have one in 2021. As always, big thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. If you want to help the channel out for just a dollar a month, head on over to patreon.com slash oksu. The link will be in the description. And if you want to help out for free, liking, commenting, or even subscribing helps me out a bunch. Alright guys, now for the next video, it's going to be crazy what I play- What is that? Oh, hey boy.